good day to you we open a session again on covid science and reason for the season as of today uh, many are reporting the efficacy of hydroxychloroquine professor katz and uh, epidemiology professor of harvard professor rich uh, many have begun to uh, report its efficacy and uh, uh, design effort to disqualify hydroxychloroquine uh, so that those who earn much money from very expensive branded drugs and from vaccines may disqualify the cheap effective drug and uh, this i call this design a science so that more patents will be bring, bring payback to the scientists who own the patents so the sense of benefactors uh, through their profession helping or benefiting the beneficiary who should be the client or the patient or the the people at large that concept is completely lost then on the vaccine front the oxford virus is being carefully developed uh, but before even before its 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 clinical trials have proved it uh, astrazeneca has uh, already contracted to produce many millions of doses of the virus uh, the oxford virus is being carefully developed and now we understand that all the talk about vaccines producing an immediate antibody effect antibody response and that was propped up for a long time as effective vaccine now we know that is not so effective vaccine is the vaccine that develops uh, t cell response cellular immunity and t cell mediated innate immunity so that's what they are looking into at the same time those who are developing the uh, oxford vaccine also are owners of the patent and uh, when the vaccine gets from pandemic to endemic state uh, quite a lot of people will earn money and the push to have more vaccines getting into kids is unrelenting for instance in sri lanka we have only had uh, 27 Uh, serious pneumococcal infections and none died of it and pneumococcal infections are very easily treated with uh, penicillins still there was a push to introduce the pneumococcal vaccine and we know there's a great push uh, world over to introduce the human papilloma virus vaccine uh, so more vaccines the more messed up immunity would be i have described in great detail because many vaccines arouse the antibody response rather than uh, make long term cellular immunity so arouse antibody response actually weakens immunity because there's a underlying cytokine storm and it consumes the specified pro resolver molecules the spms which are very important in Uh, bringing down the inflammatory response when the body meets a pathogen uh, so i am dr lalit mendis mani last subtenty post was as head of department of pharmacology in a state medical faculty uh, if you want in sri lanka if you want any of my covid science talks or digital science talks uh, please send a, a whatsapp to plus 94 77 49 59 214 These scripts are available on my YouTube uh, channel, Dr. Lalit Mendis, and also on my Facebook timeline. And from this, I want to get on to a few other things. BMG has now reported, uh, Dr. Brobby, uh, about the futility of giving, uh, making, uh, giving statins to so many people. Uh, they have gone through a meta-analysis of many studies and come to the conclusion that Uh, statins produce hardly any benefit now you'll be shocked by this but i have written about this uh, long before that uh, please check jupiter trial and statin uh, in my blog dr lalitman this blog and i call it statistics sin because the original jupiter trial uh, had to be uh, statistically ratified and all kinds of statistical stratification and layers had to be brought to produce the expected uh, projected result if you show the raw data uh, then the, there was no effect at all 
So now what's happened, and the original theory of how statins work, uh, which was supposed to be by uh, reducing cholesterol consumption, uh, production, uh, came to be completely false because cholesterol production in the body is on a negative feedback mechanism. So all in body enzymes are on a negative feedback mechanism, which means when the end product is high, the body stops the production, uh, unless, of course, there's a congenital deficiency of the process, which is only about 1 in 100,000, where you get a hyperlipidemia. Uh, so that's the statin story. And there's another recommendation by the NICE, the UK NICE body, that watch over medical practice or pharmaceutical, pharmacological practices. They are saying for chronic pain, prescribing endlessly NSAIDs, diazepam, uh, should be stopped, even paracetamol because uh, there is no benefit is what they are saying rather encourage uh, uh, exercise and you know uh, other activities that can you know, that can give them a better sense of uh, pain control uh, pain modification today i want to look at this topic how to weaken nations into an orwell's farm you remember george orwell and his animal farm one weaken the family diminish the status of marriage, rupture marriages, redefine marriage, promote promiscuity, promote precautious sexuality. That will ruin the family structure, that will reduce reverence for life, and also it will it'll, uh, it'll, uh, reduce the, uh, the stability of marriage and family, which is the building unit of society. You ruin the family, you ruin the nation. Add to this, uh, reduce reverence for life by different methods of abortion and then aborted products being used for perfumes and even for vaccines. Uh, so this uh, uh, irreverence will cause uh, a nation's weakness. Now, reverence is not only about God. Reverence is about our esteem for human life. If we keep saying survival of the fittest, and if we keep saying struggle for existence, that's what we will do at all levels, sports, entertainment, just simple living or earning. We will go for each other's throat because as we think, we behave. That's what happens. So with irreverence for marriage, irreverence for sex, uh, irreverence about seniors, and uh, irreverence about the study process, irreverence about work ethic. So before we get to God, there are many steps of reverence built into the design of man. Then of course, ultimately there has to be a, a supreme head of reverence, which is God. But before we get to him also, there are so many ways in which reverence is violated to our detriment. Uh, so when we violate reverence, our value for each other will be also diminished. That's what has happened. Thirdly, there's a c concrete and uh, organized effort to run down elected governments so that tech bosses will be all-knowing, they'll be the king, and technocrats and designer scientists will be kingmakers. So who are designer scientists who cook randomized clinical trials? So RCT was supposed to be the gold standard. Now, unless you get to the real raw data, you can't know what exactly happened because of the statistical ramifications that prop up, show up what the funding drug company wants to do. Uh, so the retracted Lancet trial from the Gilead about uh, Remdesivir and, uh, and then uh, the retracted trial on hydroxychloroquine where uh, a drug uh, uh, and data companies data were used and they, that was shown to be fraudulent not only mistakes and even the recovery trial of Oxford that both professors the lead professors involved in it are also funded in their other activities by the same drug companies interested in disproving hydroxychloroquine so I call this designer science uh, then thirdly, engineer, uh, fourthly, engineering migration and the brain drain. So the poor nations lose their IQ. This has gone on for a long time. 
so that uh, nations are made vulnerable, less competitive. We, you know, my understanding of the nations is that nations are a family of siblings, that each nation should be equally powerful, and each nation is well endowed in some area to be of significance that other nations need uh, this nation. Sri Lanka, for instance, our biodiversity, our diversity in fauna and flora, our strategic location, and our water, potable water. We have 126 rivers. All water could be drunk from, and we can export water. And the next war, they say, may be for water. So this is about how does migration offer, uh, how does migration occur. Uh, so we find... Uh, Young, uh, young students when they are just after 11 years of primary education, which we call in our country GC O-level, or 13 years GC A-level, they are made to think their nation does not have enough education and very attractive packages are offered. But all this is only to get a student visa. And many students imagine when their parents pray through their nose, about 10,000 US, and get a student visa and the first year uh, tuition fees that they'll automatically get their PR and they'll be well employed in those countries. Now this did not happen. Uh, and then there's a disconnection of the young man, the young woman, at the critical age of 17 to 21. So the process of short-circuiting the secondary education just for 11 years and thrusting the tertiary education without the two to three years in what was known as the advanced level, makes the student population more vulnerable to uh, sudden unpredictable demands that they be sent to some other country uh, to pursue what they want to pursue. So parents try their best, sometimes selling land, houses, mortgage, getting into debt, because the, 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 the dream world of the better country and they become completely disconnected. So parents are here, uh, see, uh, yes, one brother or sister is there, there is no sense of family felicity, fa family fraternity. You break up the family even by this red apple beaming, this better opportunities for education. Nation loses, family loses, family is disrupted, and very vulnerable single students are scattered all over the world who can be recruited into any protest, any rage, any rebellion. Do you see a design? Uh, then we have to mention the fact that fifth fact, that the, 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 the fifth fact, the digital screen itself makes uh, young fellows separated from their parents and there's, it, it fosters a certain kind of spook, magic monster, alien, uh, unreality, they get off their studies and they are all into more and more digital stuff, unemployable, they don't do their curriculum, they keep shifting. So you get a very shifty trillennial generation who are only interested in peril and thrill, they are sexually precocious, they, t they are on a fright, flight, fight mode. I have lectured on this extensively, academically, so please send me a WhatsApp number to what I already said, plus 9477495214, or check my YouTube channel, Dr. Lalit Mendes, uh, so that you can get some technical stuff. If you send a WhatsApp message, I will even send my uh, professional articles free of charge. Uh, so the sixth uh, thing about weakening nations is the engineering civil wars and, uh, and, and uh, manipulating migrant crisis. So the Middle East saw so many civil wars and now you know uh, migrant crisis and they got, uh, they, got, uh, they got citizenship without passports. It's so difficult to get a visa those days, but they got citizenship without passport. And in those nations, this dislodged, dislocated, family broken, vulnerable young people are being organized into protests. Did you understand that? You think it was uh, designed? Uh, you think it was uh, intended? that civil wars did not just happen. They were engineered to make boundaries between nations fluid and unstable. Now we know all nations got their boundaries and all nations got their resources. Each nation looked out, must look after their own uh, citizens 
as a family. So the push for, I'll get to that later, the push for a few rich people to really manipulate everything is a dangerous push. So here is my pitch. In 1960, in 1960, 40% of the population owned 60% of GDP, turnover and whatnot. 1970, 70% owned, uh, owned uh, 30% owned 70%. In 80, 1980, 20% owned 80% of the gross domestic product. In 1990, 10% owned 90% of the gross domestic product, which means 90% of the populace is left with um, a meager 10%. By uh, 2000, 99% is owned by 1% of global brand owners. And they need national taskmasters who will do the bidding of the global oligarchy. Uh, so they have people every, in every nation who sell the nation's resources and the nation loses their best ports, best export products, best natural resources, even best uh, high-end, uh, very sellable lands to global contractors. And global contractors have local collaborators. More country goes that way. You, you, you don't have your country for yourself. This is not happenstance. So by 2000, uh, 1% owned 99% of GDP all over the world. Now coming to the post-COVID world, it'll be even more difficult. The way it is going is at a point not 1% hold 99 99.99% of world's resources. So you see an oligarchy weaving a network which is strangulating the nations from 1960 following the economic policies of John Maynard Keynes, the one who said increase the demand, supply will have to increase, the consumer is economy theorist, which means we will have unending continual economic growth, uh, which is not working for most. It is working for 0.01% of the world's populace who own global brands. The, and we are coming to that. So, in 1960, food and beverages was the most profitable. By 1970, armament and motor industry was the most profitable. By 1990, fashion and IT became most profitable. Then come 2000, addictions became the most profitable, selling luxury, uh, cruise ships and whatnot became the most profitable. And towards 2010, selling ill health, as ridiculous as it seems, selling ill health and health products, wellness, wholeness, many, many wealth theories. Once, and I had to clarify again that my last substantive post was as head of the Department of Pharmacology in a state medical faculty. Uh, so what I say regarding pharmacological stuff that is my primary expertise. Uh, so from uh, 2010, uh, for instance, around about 1993, uh, they produced the ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, just because there, there, there were true, true symptoms because of the digitization, the three symptoms were inattention, young fellows could not sit and study long, their attention span was shortened, attention depth was made shallow, so they don't study properly and they shift from uh, left brain, that kind of classification, which is a word processing brain, to a pictorial processing brain, which means they can't sit in class and learn. They are imagining doable things and undoable things increasingly as the digitization increases. I have written ex extensively on this, published extensively on it. Please send a WhatsApp or go to my blog or my timeline and, and have a look at the things I have said about the digital screen and its effect. Uh, so by two, 2010, the most sellable products were the pharmaceuticals, the vaccines. They became multi-billion business. And unlike fashion, uh, everybody needs health, isn't it? So if you think about it, more than armament or motor industry or fashion industry, uh, the ill health industry which is manufactured 
and drugs are repurposed. No, not much research is necessary. Drugs are repurposed and the clinical trials are made to say what the drug companies want said. Uh, this is how 2010 to 2020 economy's most profiting thing became ill health. And with COVID-19, of course, we can see where exactly the world is going. So I digress slightly to give you the statistics. Uh, please give me your ideas. And if you find me irrational in any point, please educate me. Send a WhatsApp or uh, in some way, let me know whether my, my thinking comes through as rational reason. Yes, because designer science is really on. Since we deified science and we trusted science absolutely, isn't it? Uh, so we did when we were young medical professionals. My first thing was, was to go to the SLMA library, read the New England Journal of Medicine, read the Lancet. Thankfully, BMJ still has some integrity, the British Medical Journal. But the Lancet and the NEJM has published uh, fraudulent stuff, erroneous stuff so many times. We have to get behind uh, the, the statistically ramified data back to the raw data. So you have statistics, more statistics, and then comes the, uh, uh, the you have lies and more lies, and then you have statistics, yeah. Now we have to say you have lies and more lies, and you have the RCT, what they call randomized clinical trials, which are not at all that nowadays. Uh, so we get into the, uh, we, we were at the sixth point of the engineering civil wars and migrant crises, so y Europe is a hotbed of, migrant vulnerability and the globalists will use migrant vulnerability against the sovereign state. So the states lost their borders, boundaries. It looked insanity, isn't it? So many European states just taking across their borders uh, millions and millions of um, uh, the migrants and generally speaking those who can get out of their country would be a little more educated uh, some wealth you are ruining their mother country mother nation fatherland original nation and you are ruining another nation this was not happenstance now when uh, all kinds of uh, rebellion protests and rage is erupting in europe we now know what those migrant crises were engineered for, correct? Uh, so the seventh point is engineering sectarian and minority conflicts within a country using the ethnic issue, children rights, LGBTQ rights, or any other right, rightist, you know, a right protesting movement that divides the community into different fractions. So when the engineers of this stuff want to, they put three, four factions against seven others. Then again, you know, they for another cause, they put other factions against another seven others. So uh, there's endless turmoil till elected legislators are made to look dumb, foolish, and the populace gets on the social media and keeps attacking their prime minister or their president or their health minister. At present, I think it's worse in UK. Uh, Australia controlled the, pan the pandemic quite well, but now Victoria is in trouble. And now, uh, initially, Italy, US, UK got the worst uh, strain of the virus, G614. Other countries got an easier virus, D614. Now China says in Shanghai and other places they have a, another outbreak and they are saying salmon from Norway did it. The original Wuhan virus, they said bats did it. But I have explained this to you. The Wuhan virus, the COVID-19, COV-2, is mostly the bat coronavirus. And its RNA nucleotide sequence has been chopped off at the point furin enzymes are used in laboratories as a molecular tool. Exactly at that point. That's why it's a lab production. And from there, part of the human HIV virus has the nucleotide is put, is genetically merged there. 
This was first reported by five Indian scientists because Indian science is quite unimpressed by Western science. They are quite independent. And they reported it because they observed all this comes up on biological platforms. Then, of course, Professor Luke Munch, you know, the Nobel Prize winner on the HIV virus, has confirmed that that's how this COVID-19 or the COV-2 virus has been made. That's what made the spike protein of this virus very penetrating, uh, about a thousand times more penetrating than the COV-1 virus. Uh, so these are some of the issues involved, yes. Uh, so uh, seventh point is engineering sectarian and minority conflicts on right issues. Eighth point is divide the generation with revolt against parents. Digital screen is the main weapon. So there is a, the 14-year-old becomes uncontrollable. His affinity and loyalty is completely not at home, not even for his future. They are trapped in an unreal world of spook, magic, violence, sexual thrills, what not. He's lost to himself, he's lost to his future, he's lost to his parents. You don't think this is engineered? Uh, so I have written extensively and researched on the digital screen and its effect. It's uh, So our brain is designed, I believe it's designed by God, is designed for neurons to have unidirectional or preferred directional firing. So every neuron has many dendrites, you know, many dendrites, but one dendrite receives the uh, impulse and transmits it through uh, forgive me, I don't have a diagram, I'm explaining it with my fingers. Transmits, it transmits it through the axon to the receptor. And depending on what receptor, there will be neurochemical transmitters. Now, this is my research area and my training. So in the prefrontal cortex, conceptual tracts, you have dopamine and serotonin. So dopamine works for 40 minutes for salience and serotonin works for 15 minutes for satiety check back how did i do how do i improve this is called the default default mode network of thought over one hour if you maintain it lifelong every day you do not get alzheimer if you write four pages of a four pages with two languages you don't get alzheimer because handwriting is what makes brain brilliant so more the kids are taken away from handwriting because of the chick 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 chick, uh, they go berserk. They lose not only discipline in their character, they lose the discipline of curriculum. It is intended. So we are to do top-down regulation with executive empathic thinking, but we kids shift to bottom-up regulation through the amygdala. They don't think what they do. That is the peril thrill mode of survival that is important that is useful at least if we slip on a banana skin then you what happens you don't think your body adjusts tuck, 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 and you're okay but if you live sleeping on banana skins that's not existence isn't it that is the thrill peril survival mode fright flight mode children are all the time high on adrenaline they're high on cortisol they are so high on cortisol, they get a fat distribution and childhood obesity. Yes, they can even get fatty liver. I have written extensively on it. I have a new book called Screen Smart. I have many other books. Maybe we can start posting. Please go to our website, www.apeksha, A-P-E-K-S-H-A, hyphen, and lanka.org. I'll have this on my timeline, Facebook timeline, so you can go there and order books also. Yes, so this is a serious topic. I took some time because this is the eighth point of dividing the generation. So earlier it was 40 years was a generation, but now 40-year-olds don't match with 30-year-olds. 30-year-olds don't match with 25-year-olds. The 20-year-olds think all these fellows are dinosaurs of the Jurassic Park because they are so different in their digital life. It is intentional. Games are different, more violent, more sexual, 
and the effect of the digital screen depends on the pixel concentration so any long-term work please don't do on your smartphone don't do on your iPad or tab please do it on a traditional laptop without a smart screen or on your desktop even your child's education you have to encourage them this is a generation that will fight you they have to give you scientific detail so every Wednesday I do a empathic learning center clinic and consultation without charging parents come and sit and uh, I do a scientific presentation and I insist dad to come uh, because dad sometimes tends to be there only when the boy is the champion winning the race or winning many prizes at the prize giving and when the boy starts making mistakes it becomes the mother's problem at least in Asian cultures I'm sure African cultures may be just like the Asian culture so when I do a consultation I insist that dad must come and sit together share the problem and own the problem. Of course, I speak very courteously. I speak science, even to 10-year-olds. They listen to science. And I try to get the family to agree. Then we have innovated empathic motor therapy. Uh, we, we innovated it seven years ago. Two years ago, Harvard got, got onto it, and they call it Fit Kids, F-I-T-K-I-D-S. But you can do a Google search on empathic motor therapy, M-O-T-O-R. You will come across my name. Yes, much can be done. Uh, so this is about dividing the generation, revolting against parents, and they're lost to their curriculum, they're lost to their character, they're lost to their future, uh, they're lost to their career, they're lost to their parents. Ninthly, uh, make parents corporate slaves with long hours of work and pernicious perks. You know what they are. When you're too long at the workplace, you forget home and corporate uh, perks and foreign uh, uh, travel and all that also you know Thailand and you know what happens those are all intentional home is neglected and family is neglected uh, home is the forward defense line S society has you lose your forward defense line you lose your nation I repeat home family is your forward defense line you lose your forward defense line you lose your nation, you lose your children. What are we living for, isn't it? So God is a, a grand old designer, G-O-D. He did it well, and we have disrupted many things. It's time for mea culpa. We made science God, and everybody said religion can't be trusted, priests can't be trusted. We have a new set of priests, the scientists. What are they doing? They are into design of science. It's so sad. All my life, I was a student of science. And in my time, I topped my batch in every exam in the Colombo Medical Faculty. It's a much respected medical faculty. We are 150 years old. But science has become real design of science. Uh, so the uh, ninth one was this home neglect and the pernicious perks and Parents become corporate slaves for very, very small perks. You know, perks don't last. Uh, tenthly, select nationals through whom nations' resources can be bought over by global oligarchs. That's how politics go. They look for people in the nation who sell the nation's assets into the hands of a global few. I told you by uh, 2020, now it's about 0.91% of the population owning 99.99 of world's resources. Then, uh, 11 point is that there are concrete plans to ruin immunity. The truth is that COVID infections were worse, where flu shots and other vaccines were most. I repeat, COVID infection was worst with mortality and death, where flu shots and vaccines were worst. Plus, where hydroxychloroquine was not given. Twelfth, uh, engineering pandemic to impoverish nations. So this goes on. Uh, by, uh, recently, a Google chap said, humans are the biohazard, that schools must never be the normal school. Do it from home. So there is a drivenness to separate human beings and minimum human interaction. Just think where the world is going, isn't it? Uh, so let's keep touch. I think that's enough food for thought. Please write back to me. Please send a WhatsApp, even if it's long. 
or answer me in my timeline. So if you think my thinking is uh, in any way not reasonable, please let me know. Then I will rethink and we can have a chat on it, discussion on it. I will have my uh, email maybe on my timeline. So if you want to send something longer, you can. If you send me your email to the WhatsApp I mentioned, plus 94 77 49 59 214, uh, I can send you the thing you're asking for. Specifically, let me know whether it's COVID science or digital science or some other topic that I have covered. Thank you for listening. We will meet again at another time.